सो टुडे वील डिस्कस लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एसोसिएटेड मैट्रिसेस एंड सम दिस सो कॉल्ड रो रो एशलॉन फॉर्म ऑफ ए मैट्रिक्स सो वील एसोसिएट मैट्रिसेस टू लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एंड देन डिस्कस सिस्टम्स ऑफ लीनियर इक्वेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ मैट्रिक्स with the help of matrices and then we'll do how to solve the systems of linear equations so that is the main theme of this course solving systems of linear equations so before that uh, we'll uh, uh, do this slightly unimportant from this point uh, this course point of view that is uh, given a matrix how it can be thought of as a linear map from rn to rm so for example a uh, function of n variables is a map f is called linear if it can be written like a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a n x n so as so far suitable constant a1 a2 n so x1 x2 x n are the entries or of x that uh, bold x that is an element of rn bold x is an element of rn written in a column form so elements of rn will always be written as in a in the column form so such a so such a map is called linear, linear map of n variables so now suppose uh, this constants the coefficients a1 a2 n you can write as a row a1 a2 an and think of it as a matrix a then uh, the map fx can be defined uh, can be thought of as matrix multiplication a x a is a 1 by n matrix and x is a n by 1 matrix so that multiplication is just that 1 by 1 scalar a number a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a n x1 so similarly so more generally if there is a m by n matrix it can be viewed as a linear map from rn to rm so well, x is a column vector of size n then ax is a column vector of size m so you get a map so points of rn are mapped to points of rm so this with this view point we can study matrices geometrically also we we'll see some see some examples today and then we'll go over to our main topic of this course that is systems of linear equations so uh, i have called linear map uh, for rn to r i have given example but there is a formal definition of linear maps or linear transformations which is the following a map a vector valued map of n n variables is called linear if it satisfies these two conditions f of x plus y is f x plus f y and f of lambda x is lambda f x lambda being a scalar so look at this remark if you have m by n matrix if you define f x to be a times x then it is a linear map why because now this is matrix multiplication okay. and this is vector addition and this is equal to ax plus ay this is because of one property which i did not <laughs> forgot to tell last time that is a of b plus c a times b plus c is ab plus ac that property which i forgot to tell yesterday Or matrices A, B, C, and so also on the other side, A can be here also. Then B A plus C. A. So because of that, uh, this property is true, and uh, this is also true. and that is because of following property that also i did not notice that is a if lambda is a scalar so a scalar can jump around in the product anywhere okay that property i i will add that also so when you see if you have matrices 
then you cannot make b jump here and there that is not possible but if b if there is a scalar just a number then you can make it jump anywhere so so therefore this f it becomes a linear map so it satisfies 1 and 2 so so this is an example of a linear map when a is an m by n matrix then fx equal to a times x that's an example of a linear map and look, look at the uh, writing in red there are no other examples of linear maps these are the only linear maps okay so the so called we, we can say ax is an obvious linear map but there are no other linear these are the only linear maps from rn to rm so any linear map from rn to rm has to be given by an m by n matrix so that is uh, that justifies the title the a is called the matrix associated to the linear transformation f so from now on we'll interchange of course really using uh, we won't be using this too much uh, that map as a linear uh, matrix as a linear transformation will not be used too much in the course so now and then some remarks can be made later so for example as a linear map one problem is given so show that this uh, matrix 1 minus 1 that is just a 1 uh, what is 2 by 1 matrix so it's a linear can be thought of as a linear map from r1 to r2 so show that its range is aligned through origin so is such problem how to solve so uh, just describe the problem here again So now how, how does it work? So you take any any point T. What is the image? Image is T to be thought of as a one by one matrix, and I do row by column multiplication. So the one this t is a column vector of size 1 so it's a very trivial situation column vector of size 1 so when you do this row by column multiplication you get t minus t so what, what it means that this point will go somewhere here okay now you can do theory or you can do little bit, bit more of plotting so 0 0 will go to 0 Suppose you take instead of this t, instead of taking minus t, so that will come to here minus t t. So you can see that uh, range lies on this line. Uh, this is wrong, no? So this is wrong. So here, sorry. So when when I, when I make mistake, you should tell. You can tell. Is okay. Um, so you get this line as a range. Of course, uh, we can write. We can do it. Uh, Theoretically also, uh, range of t, uh, this uh, vector t minus t, you think in the xy plane, you can write it as xt and yt. So you see that xt is t and yt is minus t. That's a parametric equation of a line. And that line, if you eliminate t, is x plus y is equal to 0. So that is a line x plus y. So that is a range. All the points in the domain will, uh, in, under the map, will fall on this line x plus y is equal to 0. So that's the problem. Describe the range as a map. So the range is line x plus y equal to zero. Is it clear? So there's another example. So determine the domain and range, and show that the range uh, is a plane through origin. So notice that 
as far as part one is concerned, there is fine domain and range. So it's a three by two matrix. So domain will be R2, range will be R3. All right. So now how to find range? So take any general UV in the domain and how, see how this, uh, where does that UV go in the th in three dimensional space. So you have to do this matrix multiplication, the matrix B multiplying UV. So you will get these calculations. So first entry is X, Y, Z as a function of UV, 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 UV. So you get these equation X equal to U minus V, Y is equal to 2V minus U, Z is equal to V. So these can be thought of as parametric equation of a plane because everything is linear. There are no powers or complicated functions coming. Everything is linear in U and V. So it will be equation of a plane only, parametric equation of a plane. Here the, there are two parameters, so it will be a two dimensional object, therefore it is a plane. Of course, you can eliminate U and V from these three equations, then you will get this standard way of writing plane, X plus Y is equal to Z. So that is the range. So any, any, any point, so if it is R2 to R3 situation, so there is, there will be some plane through origin. So any point here will be go somewhere on this point, on this plane only, under this transformation, which I call B here, but just that matrix 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2 and 0, 1. Okay, so that is a, so that is a geometric aspect. So matrix is just an array of number, but it is doing something if you interpret it properly. Okay, it's not something very static, just sitting as some number. It does something dynamic also. This is one more example. So consider the matrix 1101 and determine the images of unit square, unit circle, and unit disk. So I just uh, I just give answers here. You can work out detail in your lecture. This is a unit square. And its range will be this uh, range of these vertices will be uh, this I uh, have written there uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2. So these are, this comes here, this, this comes here, this goes here and this goes here. So corresponding range of this uh, square will be this parallelogram. Because a linear map will always send <laughs> flat objects to flat objects. So if uh, this point and these points are mapped at this and this respectively, the line joining these two will have to be some curve here, but a linear map cannot make straight lines into curved lines. It has to be straight only. So it will remain this and similarly other. So this is the boundary of the square will map like this and inside will of course go to inside. So a, a square can become a parallelogram under a linear map, that's all. Any rectangle can become a parallelogram. Any parallelogram will be a parallelogram or it may by chance become a square. Similarly, uh, second part, So this uh, I have to, uh, I don't know which one, which way it goes, I, I did not check that much. So you see uh, this matrix A on a general point x, y, I should have written probably u, v, but anyway now I have written x, y. So A of x, y is x plus y, y, that is you multiply, so by the default we have taken coordinates x, y here. Mm -hmm. Ok, 
okay. So, at any point x y here will go to some point u v here and that is described like this that is x y will go to x plus y and second coordinate being same as y and that is uh, u, u v. So, we can solve now u is x plus y and v is y. So, we can solve and conclude that x is u minus v and y is v. Anyway, y is v is automatic. So, so, but also we know that x y satisfy the property that x square plus y square is 1 because we are moving on this circle, we are staying on this circle. So, we just correspondingly see what is the property satisfied by u v. So, x square plus y square is equal to 1 will imply that u square minus 2 u v plus 2 v square is equal to 1, all right. Because x is u minus v and y is v. So, that is u square minus 2 u v plus 2 v square is equal to 1 and that will be an ellipse. So, this uh, ellipse will be inclined ellipse, not standard ellipse, but inclined this way or this way I have not checked, huh? so you can check if you want. Some way it is inclined, some inclined ellipse, all right. And of course, uh, disc if you take inside, that will go into this inside of this elliptic disc that is all. So, what a, what a linear map does? Linear map converts a second order curve into second order curve only. It cannot make it more complicated. So, circle is a second order curve, ellipse is also second order curve and closed. So, circle cannot become high parabola for example. So, it can become most at most distortion can be yeah, I don't know from circle to ellipse that is eccentricity can only change it cannot become a 3 degree curve or it cannot become an open second degree curve it will remain second degree curve only because only linear changes are allowed ok. So, substitutions are all linear so degree of the curve will not change so second degree will curve remain second degree curve. So, ellipse can become circle for example circle can be become ellipse ellipse will be some other ellipse like that. So, is one more example finally final example. These are some kind of so called degenerate situation. The same same problem if you see, then you will see that uh, the vertices of square map to 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. So, these points are collinear. So, it is a we, we expect a parallelogram, but it is a degenerate situation. So, it is a degenerate parallelogram. So, two sides have become parallel uh, coincident. So, it is a parallelogram which is uh, just a line actually. So, a degenerate parallelogram. So, the range of the square is the line segment from 0, 0 to 2, 2. And similarly, if you have x square to y square is equal to 1, so it will map, it will the range is x plus y, x plus y only, that is u is u is equal to v. So, it will be that line u is equal to v, everything is on the line u is equal to v. And since x square to y square is 1, the minimum will be minus root 2, maximum will be plus root 2, etc. This you can solve two in two ways, one is using constant maximum minimum x square plus y square is equal to 1. So, sorry, minimize and maximize x plus y subject to x square plus y square is equal to 1. Or you can directly do x square to cos theta, y square to sin theta. Then you will have what is the maximum value of cos theta plus sin theta? Obviously, root 2. And minimum value of cos theta plus sin theta is minus root 2. So, that directly you can. So, we are not interested in those details here. So, somehow you find. So, that will become, so circle will move to a diagonal line only, so it will collapse. So, two, two, two semicircles will collapse to the same line or something like that. And similarly, the, if you take in, inside, inside will be same line segment because it is a degenerate curve. So, circle goes to a line, the inside the line is just line only, nothing more, it cannot go outside that. So, now we come uh, to the main topic of our course that is linear equations in n variables. So, this is the main topic, we consider m linear equations in n variables. So, uh, equations are of this kind, first equation is some a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 plus a 1 and x n is equal to b 1. The equation in n variables x 1 x 2 x n, okay. There is a second equation a 2 1 x 1 plus a 2 2 x 2 etc. And so, so, in this way there are m equations. So, this is called a system of linear equations. 
so this system can in short be written in using our matrix language and we can write the system as ax is equal to b so this uh, the whole big thing can be in the just it's a code code word huh? in code lang coded language is just one some three four characters ax will be okay but now you have to understand the code so a j k is an m by n so called coefficient matrix x is the unknown vector so when n variables x1 x2 xn are put in the form of the common column vector we're just coding we're coding the n variables x1 x2 xn <laughs> as a column vector in rn and then the right hand side is coded into one single vector b in rm so this is a shortcut way of writing the system of linear equations in terms of our matrices so we need this extra so called a plus that is the, take the matrix a and also add the right hand side to it that is vector b that will become an m plus 1 m by n plus 1 matrix it will have n plus 1 columns and uh, this is used this is useful for solving the system so that is why it is constructed it is constructed because it is useful for solving the system and it's called the augmented matrix so this augmented matrix completely describes the above system of equations so that means the variables x1 x2 xn now have gone in cyber space let us say now they have disappeared from we need not write them just coefficients and the right hand side that itself describes the system of equation so x1 x2 xn have become so called it gone into background in some sense yeah all right only coefficient matrix and right hand side vector so you put them together and of course the last column is b it's understood that is the right hand side but uh, we will want to draw a line also to uh, to emphasize that uh, the b is the right hand side so you put a line in it if you don't put a line and you're good enough to figure out that this is right hand side then don't put line okay so it's not needed but it is conventional to put that line vertical line to separate the left hand side and the right hand side so how do we solve this system so this is a system So this matrix is given that means system of equations is given so how do we solve this system of equations so for this gauss proposed the three kinds of operations which we, sh we must perform and each operation when you perform changes the linear system given system into a new system which is equivalent to the old system right so first one operation is pij okay you interchanging two different equations say i and j so instead of ith equation we write jth equation and instead of jth equation write ith equation so the same so the system equation is is changed in the ordering only but it's equivalent to the original system the solution will be same for both so this operation called pij p means stands for say permuting so permuting ith and jth ith and jth equations then second operation is uh, we call ejkc a multiply an equation say kth equation by some scalar c and add it to some other equation say j of the system this is often we do when we solve simultaneous equation to eliminate variables we do this multiply by some constant some some equation and add it to some other equation so hopefully one variable will drop out so this kind of operation we do right so that is the operation is described and then multiplying an equation by a non zero number c this is this is just for convenience we some strictly speaking we don't need this operation uh, but uh, we usually we need will need it only very in the very end but still it, we, it is listed as an operation so it is still listed as an operation so for example you can do it to clear denominators 
So some equation lot of fractions are there you can multiply it by some big numbers or the denominators go away. So these kinds of for convenience you can have this. So these three elementary operations you can perform on the equation system of equations and continue always get a system which is equivalent to earlier one especially third one is important that you should multiply by a non-zero number otherwise there will be problem because you should be able to recover the old system then only it's called equivalent. So if you apply Pij twice you will recover the same system again transpose two equations then this one can be recovered by multiplying by minus c and adding etc. And third one you can recover by multiplying by 1 by c but if 1 by c is not allowed then you are in soup. So that's for MJC means you C should be always non-zero number. So I remark that each of the operation is equivalent to an obvious corresponding operation on the rows of the augmented matrix A plus. So just interchange matrix, interchange rows of matrix or multiply a row by some constant C added to some other row or multiply a row by a non-zero constant. That is exactly same thing. What you are doing to equation, you are doing to this augmented matrix. So the simplification is uh, in uh, physical work that is when you do this operation on equations you have to have the every time write x1, x2, xn, x1 everywhere but you do on matrices at least that much writing is avoided writing x1, x2, xn so many times just on the coefficients you do the same operations okay. So therefore using this as a hint we define elementary row operations on a matrix. So we have we, we by uh, Taking some uh, say inspiration from Gauss, we not define row operations on any matrix, whether it is coming from system of equations or not, it may be coming from some other source. We can still apply those row operations. Okay, so inspired by Gauss's method of solving linear equations. So first operation is applying P J K to A, that is interchange J K S row, J J S row with K S row and K S row with J S row. So interchange interchanging two rows, interchanging j s and k s rows. Similarly apply e j k c to a for j not equal to k. So this means multiplying the k s row by some scalar c and adding it to the j s row. And lastly we apply m j c for c non-zero that means j s row is multiplied by a scalar c. So the corresponding operation we can do on general matrices. There is some small exercise there which says that if you apply first, see the thing is when you write, so first apply this one, then this one and this and this one. So interchange J and K row, do this AJKC and then again interchange JK row, then it becomes same as multiplying J S row by C adding it to K S row. This is just simple exercise. So, among among operations it's enough to use for e j k for j more than k sometimes it is useful for example when you are doing some row operations on a matrix and suppose first row you have got in a nice form and don't want to change it then you say we will apply only for j more than k we won't change first row at all so if you that's sometimes useful it is not something uh, compulsory or something very important they just say an observation so now what that is the so now the most important is this. So if you apply a sequence of row e elementary row operations and you do it cleverly then the matrix gets reduced to what is called a row echelon form. It is a, a slightly simpler form. It is a simpler form, yes, much simpler form than original matrix. So in this form each row except perhaps the first it starts with a string of zeros. We will see how it looks like. Each row starts with strictly more number of zeros than the previous row. I will draw a picture here. These are all zeros. So first row, then second row will have some zeros and then it will start. Third row will have more zeros than it will start. Fourth row will have even more zeros and ultimately there will be only zeros below. So this, so this looks like a staircase, a staircase uh, French word is echelon, so this is called row echelon form. So matrix looks like a, some kind of staircase, okay. 
So each row starts with strictly more number of zeros than the previous row. The first non-zero entry in the jth row is called the jth pivot. So these are pivots. First non-zero entry in each row is called pivot in echelon form. Of course, by definition, jth pivot is strictly below and to the right of j minus 1 power. That is, this pivot is strictly to the right of this pivot. And this pivot is strictly to the right of previous pivot. So, so that is echelon form. This is just extra description. So, first that uh, this line itself says the same thing. This line itself says whatever this is saying, okay. These two lines are saying the same thing. Because that is lower row has strictly more number of zeros, it means the first pivot will strictly on the right. So same thing, strictly same thing. So number of pivots in a row echelon form of A cannot be more than number of zeros. So in each row there can be at most one pivot. So at most there will be m pivots. So at least so number of pivots is less than equal to number of rows. So let's see in some example. So these are mat matrix in row echelon form. Okay, so first row has no zeros. Uh, in fact, in the left, on the left there are no zeros. In the second row, one zero is there on the left. The third row, there are three zeros on the left. And the fourth row, only zeros are there. So it is row echelon form and the pivots are marked by the yellow color. First non-zero entry in each row, that they are pivots. So three is the first pivot, one is the second pivot, 12 is the third pivot. So pivots are indicated. So this one, for example, this is not in row echelon form because there's zeros in between. So you, you must enter, suppose you interchange third and fourth row, then you'll get row echelon form. In your mind, you can think that the pivot in the third row is, is outside the matrix on the right. Then you will think that, okay, right, third pivot is coming to the right of the fourth pivot. That is not allowed. So it is not row echelon form. So suppose you do a mat, take a matrix A and do row reduction, row operations and get row echelon form then it is not unique, several different people can get different row echelon forms, but the position of pivot will not change, that is very important. So if a given matrix A is there, its row echelon form, it is, though it is not unique, the positions of the pivots will be same for all. And then there is a reduced row echelon form, you can do further row operations and ensure some more zeros, okay, that uh, so each pivot can be made one by multiplying row by one by p1, one by p2, one by, because they are non-zero. You can make each pivot as one. And then use these more row operations to make all the entries above the pivots to be zeros. You can keep on subtracting. So that you can do. However, we will not be interested in that. This is called a reduced row echelon form. It is unique for any matrix. And the, the, the red line says, the reduced row echelon form is mainly of theoretical interest only. We won't be bothered about it much. We want some row echelon form and not interested in reduced or unique. Okay. So well, let's look at an example. So you have given a system of linear equations. You are asked to create an augmented matrix and then do row operations to make it a, into a row echelon form. So this is the augmented matrix. All right, so this is augmented matrix and then we can do some row operations. I, I have not described, you can do I have one example, another example I will describe row operations also. So this becomes a row echelon form. So the, the matrix on the right is the row echelon form of a, a augmented matrix. Now look at, uh, so this is uh, for example the last row you may, some people may like to divide by 12 to make it 0, 0, 1. So that will be different from here. So, but that's same. We are not, we are not interested in uniqueness. You get a row echelon form. Okay. So this is a row echelon form, which is not unique. Now, when you have this row echelon form, now you can directly read the system of equations which we have got, which is equivalent to the given system. So the third, what is the third equation? 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 is equal to 12. So now what it shows that this such a thing is not possible, which means this system is inconsistent, which is not clear from A plus, but after row operations, we know it's real phase. It's not a consistent, it cannot be solved at all. So given system is inconsistent and has, has more solutions. So look at the second example. 
So these are uh, uh, three variables and four equations. So we can write the augmented matrix as 1, minus 1, 0 and then minus 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 10, uh, 0, 10, 25, 20, 10, etc. You can write the augmented matrix. So here uh, this coefficient of x1 is 0, here coefficient of x2 is, uh, x3 is 0, okay. So these things are understood. So these are mat augmented matrix and when we do row operations, well probably details we will see later. We will get a row echelon form like this. So there are some details we want, you can see that. We have added first row to the second and minus 20 first row to the fourth. So that is what we have done. Maybe I should have written in EIJ notation anyways, okay. So adding a first row to the second row and a minus 20 times first row to the fourth row, these operations we have done, then we get this kind of matrix. So first step is to get zeros in the first column, that is how you should do systematically. So systematically first get zeros in the first column, then zeros in the second column, etc. like that you should go. So now we have made first column. Only pi what is there, all others are 0. Then we are interchanging R2 and R4 because we see that uh, this R2 has a, uh, that, uh, so the, the second row is fully 0. So in any way it should come last. So we interchange R2 and R4. And then you do some uh, multiplying R2 by minus 1 and then adding 3 times R third row, etc. We will get this. So that means now. Okay, so some more operations are needed. So now we see that uh, that uh, second row has more zeros than third rows in the left, so we interchange second and third row because we want more zeros on the left in the lower lower row. So we just interchange, we will get this. Now it already is in row echelon form. If you want, you can do this operation. If you don't want, don't do this operation. That last one, okay? Already you are row echelon form. And this one, if you want, you do it. You don't want, don't. So now equation, system of equations become equivalent to this one, x1 minus x2 plus x3 is 0, 2x2 plus 5x3 is 18, x3 is equal to 2 and 0 is equal to 0, so at least consistency is there, x3 is 2 and now you can do back substitution. So last equation shows consistency and solutions may be obtained by the back substitution method. So x3 is equal to 2 is already arrived, we have arrived at, which will give x2 is equal to 4 and then it will give x1 equal to 2 and there is only unique solution, all right. So that is third equation says x3 equal to 2, so second will give you x2 and then, then first will give you x1. This is called back substitution method. So there is similar one more example is there, not uh, much time you can do, I have given it here. So here a slight uh, interesting point is, so we get uh, after row echelon form, this is a row echelon form of the augmented matrix, the pivots are there second pivot is to the right of the first pivot and third row has no nothing, so it's only zeros. So uh, we are analyzing a similar way, the third equation becomes uh, 0 is equal to 0, that is consistency and this second equation, this is the first equation. So now by sub back substitution method, you write x2 as a function of x3 and x4. And then by back substitution x1 again as a function of x3 and x4. So what we find that there were uh, three variables and three equations but actually there were only, sorry, four variables and three equations but actually there were four variables and only two equations. We find out that actually there are only two equations. So two variables are free to take any values. And in this method of solving by row echelon form, we always evaluate the variables corresponding to the pivots and the variables which, which have no pivots that is the columns which have no pivots those are taken as free variables. So we could have solved probably, probably for x3 in terms of x2 also but we do not do that in this method. It's actually this is an algorithmic method. It is uh, fed in computers actually by hand nobody uses this method in, in actual practice. So the variables which <laughs> x1 the nth jth column corresponds to sorry kth column corresponds to the kth variable. So you see the variables 
which correspond to column without pivots, they are taken as free. So in this problem, third and fourth column are without power pivots. So we want x3 and x4 as free variables and solve for x2 and x1 in terms of x3 and x4. That is, that is uh, forced for us. Though there are other methods of solving, you can write, uh, as I told you, you can write, you can take x1 and x3 as free variable and x2 and x4 in terms of that. But we won't do that in this course because we are using uh, some kind of algorithmic method, so called row echelon form method. So the variables corresponding to pivotless columns will be taken free and the variables corresponding to pivoted columns, they will be solved in terms of free variables. So we find the solution is a two parameter family because there are only two equations for four variables. So that solution set is a two parameter family, okay, that's all.